Right, guys, so today... Oh. Uh. Two seconds, two seconds. <laughs> Better, isn't it? Williams to Red Bull, I think, in terms of aero package, mate. Thank you very much. So, Ferrari. Yes, they're going through a pretty sticky patch at the moment. Yes, Charles managed to somehow secure a P2, which he deserves a huge amount of credit for, considering where they qualified, seven and 11 in a Ferrari. Not good enough. But I wanna talk a little bit about the man in charge today. Matteo Bonotto, the exceptional glasses, the great hairdo. Matteo Bonotto, there's a lot more to him than that. A very accomplished man. But is he the right man to take Ferrari forward? Well, I want to dive a little bit more into his backstory, how he got to where he is today, and answer that exact question, give my opinion on the situation. So sit back and let's have a little chat about Ferrari team principal, Mattia Bonotto. Just like Romain Grosjean, Mattia Bonotto is actually Swiss born, but does not represent the Swiss flag. He was born in Lausanne in Switzerland on the 3rd of November, 1969, making him 50 at the moment. And both his parents were Italian, but he did grow up in Switzerland, hence his very Italian sounding name. You wouldn't know looking at him, would you? Why Switzerland? I can't find out exactly, but he seemed to spend a lot of time there. He must have grew up there and spent a significant period of his life there because he graduated in mechanical engineering from Lausanne Polytechnic in 1994, when he was about 24, 25 years of age. It was upon this that he decided, Ferrari, that's where I'm going. So the following year, he took the plunge got a master's in automotive engineering at the Dipartimento di Ingegneria Enzo Ferrari at Modena University. And it was upon graduating that he then joined Ferrari in 1995 under the guise of Jean Todd at the time as a test engine engineer. So he kept in this role pretty much for about nine years until 2004 where he became race engineer for Rubens Barrichello. And then in 2007, he became chief engineer for the Ferrari Formula One team. He continued to race through the ranks, establish himself more and more in that Ferrari team until in mid-2016, he was appointed chief technical officer, the equivalent to Adrian Newey, James Allison, at Red Bull and Mercedes respectively. So big role, big responsibility, the man when it came to the technical development of that Ferrari. And you've got to say that 2017 and 2018 Ferrari was, you know, it was the next best thing. It was nipping at the heels of the Mercedes. Yes, obviously in recent times, Red Bull first, then Mercedes have been dominant since Ferrari kind of fell away, but Ferrari have still very much been up there at the threshold, at the very top, challenging. And Matthias got a big part to play in that. And then on January the 7th, 2019, he replaced Maurizio Arrivabene at Ferrari as the team principal. So that's Matthias' history. That's how he got into the position he is at Ferrari. But now I wanna just kind of Talk my opinion, essentially, on, uh, on whether I think Matia is the right person for that role. So, first and foremost, I've got to talk about Ferrari's riches. I, it cannot be underestimated how privileged of a position Ferrari are in, in terms of the amount of money they receive every year from both sponsorships and Formula One. So the sponsorship income is almost double that of Mercedes, who are the next kind of highest, which is it's a huge amount of money. I actually covered this a bit in my most expensive sponsors in Formula One, so check that out if you haven't already. And then you've got the extra payments that were sanctioned by Bernie, the, the long-standing, to keep Ferrari happy, right? So they've got, in terms of resource, Ferrari should be by far and away the best team. They've got amazing factories, they've got all this money coming in, they've got the pull of the Ferrari name to get the best drivers in. Ferrari should be smashing it, really. They really should. Yet... No constructor's title in 12 years, no driver's title in 13. Unacceptable. As far as I'm concerned, completely unacceptable. This season, it looks like they're slower than the racing point and the McLaren still. I know Charles had a barnstorming end of that race, but if, if, if it hadn't have been such a you know, war of attrition in that race, then I don't see Ferrari ha having placed nearly as well with Charles as they did, personally. I think Ferrari fans deserve so much better. Ferrari have one of the most passionate fan bases in all of sport. That cannot be underestimated. No other teams have that. The, the, the pull and the following that Ferrari do 
and all this resource, they've got everything they need to succeed, yet they continuously come up short. And Ferrari fans, I see a minority out there. I'm, I'm, I'm talking to like the Ferrari fans who will just blindly defend. You should be the most critical of anyone, right? For example, I'm a West Ham fan, right? Ever suffering West Ham fan. When West Ham are messing up, when they're doing wrong, I will criticise because I want change. I want my team to do better. If I just blindly defended all the stupid decisions the board made, that would make me no better than them. And we wouldn't achieve the change that we need to be successful. You know what I mean? You need to be questioning, Ferrari fans, what, what is going on at the team? Because there's clearly... Some, there needs to be a big change, right? There needs to be a big change because things are not changing quick enough. Now, it's important to make a distinction between a chief technical officer who's basically the top nerd, right? They need to like know their stuff and they're, they're, they are overseeing the overall development of that car. Then you've got the team principal who's more of a manager. It's their responsibility to put the right people in the right places, okay, including that chief technical officer but obviously since Mattia moved and replaced Arriva Bene at Ferrari there has been no chief technical officer taking that role kind of it's like Mattia's wearing both of those hats so he's team principal but he's also overseeing all of the uh, the independent kind of directors of each part of the business now look we're never going to know how much of their recent shortcomings is down to Mattia's poor leadership or how much of it is down to individual kind of errors from you know not having the right people. But ultimately, Matera is responsible for those people. Okay, he it's his head on the line. Okay, if things aren't going right, and they're not going particularly right at the minute. Let's be honest. Now there were a lot of murmurings when Matera was hired that he wasn't the right man for the job. Bernie was actually quoted saying that he's an engineer, not a leader. And there is a distinct difference there, right? Okay, uh, an engineer can be very intelligent and very you know, academically able, but a good team principal is playing chess, not manufacturing the pieces. You know what I mean? There is a difference there. There's a lot of problems, not just the car itself. There's all this communication issue. I mean, all of this with Sebastian, where it feels like, you know, Matea just called him out of the blue and was just like, yeah, we're not continuing. Bye. Was just a, it stinks of, uh, well, the fact that Seb has been so vocal, I suppose, it, that, that says all that needs to be said about the way that this wasn't managed in a very good way. And the opposite of how kind of McLaren and science and how that's broken up as well and, and how that seems to be a very harmonious breakup and all part is respectful and that. And there's issues with Ricardo uh, Renault as well. I think it's a very similar, like, there's, there's a lot of salt there, which is a shame. It doesn't have to be that way. McLaren have proved that. But again, that, that calls into question Matias' leadership. Is it Ferrari arrogance to not, you know, be prepared to take criticism on the chin? Because, you know, I know in Rush, that's, uh, that's discussed, isn't it? With the whole uh, Lauda scene when he's criticising the Ferrari and they're like, you can't say that about Ferrari. Well, I'm sorry, but if you're not going to be open and honest about your issues, then you're not going to improve and change. You look at Mercedes. I feel like Mercedes and Toto have built a very, people aren't a, afraid to, to own up to their mistakes. If, if you've made an error, just be honest about it because it's done. The error's been made, but as soon as you admit to it, then you can change things. I don't feel that that culture exists at Ferrari. And I think that's a big part of their downfall from a, and that's not just a material problem. I do feel this sense of arrogance has existed in Ferrari for a long time since the Enzo days, you know what I mean? And I feel like there needs to be this adjustment and change because it did work for that really extended period where things were going really well but to be honest I put a lot of that down to Ross Braun you know what I mean I'm a huge fan of Ross and I do feel like he would have been very you know he would have instilled a bit of you know accountability amongst the people at that team but ultimately do I think Ferrari will get back to the top with Matera in charge I don't think so the thing is with Matera I think he's a he cuts a very calm relaxed you know sophisticated figure you know what I mean he's not he's not a wild big out there personality again let's look at football managers Jose Mourinho Rafa Benitez both incredible managers in their own right but both completely different in their approach now some approaches work better than others Mourinho's approach worked amazing when he was at FC Porto and in the early days at Chelsea but then it didn't work at all at Man United so you again it, it's like it's finding the right person with the right approach to leadership for that team and I feel like Ferrari need a character who can match the passion and the energy that is at Ferrari. 
But there you go, that's what I think. Let me know in the comments below what you think about Mattia Bonotto. Is he the right man for the job? For me, if, it was, if, if I was in charge, I would definitely move Mattia back into a, a chief technical officer role, for sure. I'd definitely keep him at the team because he clearly knows his stuff, but I would find a new team principal. Who that would be? I don't know. If you were to replace Mattia Bonotto, who would you replace him with? There we go, that's a wrap. Thank you very much for watching. I do really appreciate it. God, I'm so happy that the season's back. I'm so happy I've got a haircut. Things are good, okay? Things are good. I'm, I'm a happy Tomo, okay, right now. So uh, if you've enjoyed this one, make sure you look at that like button. Give it one of them, all right? That really hurt. And of course, you know, tick all the subscribe button, notification bell, all that good stuff. If you have enjoyed the video, I hope you come back for the next one. This weekend, qualifying for the Styrian Grand Prix, I will be doing a live covering qualifying. So make sure you're there to watch along with me if you fancy. My name's been Tomo. This is the Tomo F1 YouTube channel. Thank you very much as ever again for watching. Have a good one.